Today we continue learning about recombination. In particular, our goal will be for today um, to study radiative recombination um, under thermal equilibrium and also um, we will try to divide, uh, derive uh, equations for uh, quantitative description of trap assisted or shock lead hole um, recombination uh, via deep uh, trap states, some deep energy levels within the band gap. Um, short recall from our previous lecture, we um, introduced the description of non-equilibrium charge carriers, have shown how we describe them quantitatively. We are introducing a new concept of quasi-Fermi energy levels associated for electrons and holes. That allows us to describe not just n naught and p naught, but also n naught plus delta n and n p naught plus delta p. Uh, delta p, these are photo excited charge carrier concentration and uh, um, that's very important because uh, we definitely need to deal with them in uh, all optoelectronic devices. Uh, also we considered absorption of light of photon flux with photon energy larger than the band gap of semiconductor and calculated the photo oh. generation. Oh, Hello guys! Yeah, hope you will come next time a bit earlier, but that's okay. Uh, good, uh, good, sit down. <coughs> uh, so, after that, we also, uh, during last lecture, uh, described bimolecular recombination um, and uh, considered two cases of uh, this bimolecular or band to band recombination, so called, uh, which uh, is under high level excitation and low level of excitation. So with that, we uh, finished our discussion and today, as I already mentioned, we will go uh, further. First of all, we will focus uh, explicitly on radiative bimolecular recombination and we will derive equations uh, for radiative um, recombination rate under thermal equilibrium and uh, and also um, radiative recombination coefficient. So, this is some also recall from uh, previous, just to make you more um, into this topic again for today. Uh, we have some thermal equilibrium, we start always from thermal equilibrium. Um, we have some um, generation rate, thermal uh, uh, under thermal equilibrium and uh, obviously since we have steady state condition um, there should be a balance between uh, generation and recombination rate under this oops come back no, like this so we should also have this recombination of uh, charge carriers and then we have a balance because they are equal to each other we remember from previous discussion that bimolecular recombination involves, uh, like it happens when two mobile charge carriers meet in the volume of a semiconductor, and that's why in order to have this event uh, realized, uh, we uh, need both of charge carriers. So a recombination rate obviously will be proportional to the concentration of both electrons and holes. So that's why um, here we have concentration of equilibrium charge um, carriers, uh, electrons and holes. And this part we have um, recombination, radiative recombination coefficient. So um, last time I marked it as gamma, this time as kr. So in different literature sources you may uh, see um, different uh, notations for this coefficient. Um, however, um, need to be uh, ready for that. So here we specifically put this index R to highlight that this is radiative recombination. So um, also can write that 
um, uh, instead of the product of equilibrium holes and electrons concentration, we will um, also be able to describe it in terms of uh, Ni square, which is intrinsic charge carrier concentration. So now we mess up everything by uh, shining some light with photon energy larger than the band gap, and uh, on this actually creates some additional generation of non-equilibrium charge carriers because of photogeneration. So we have uh, G uh, uh, naught, uh, which is thermal equilibrium, and G uh, photogeneration adds up. Um, and uh, obviously our recombination rate will not be equilibrium, this will not be R0, it will be different. Why different? Because we have different concentration of electrons and holes uh, available in the volume of semiconductor, and that's why we need to take this into account. So, um, when we are talking about this um, recombination rate, when we shut of the uh, light. So we turn off the light, in this moment when we um, turn off the light uh, excitation, we start to monitor how um, charge carrier concentration changes over time in this semiconductor. So what do we have in this moment of turning uh, light? We have uh, thermal generation J0, which is um, according to uh, thermal equilibrium. And uh, uh, some recombination by molecular radi radiative recombination rate R. So in order to describe it, we obviously need to operate with uh, real concentration of charge carriers in the semiconductor, and that is total concentration of charge carriers available, means um, NP, to uh, both photogenerated and thermally generated, times this uh, radiation, radiative recombination, uh, bimolecular radiative recombination coefficient, Kr. It doesn't change, so it remains the same uh, under uh, dark conditions and also under illumination conditions. In other form, uh, we can write that it will be um, recombination uh, rate at uh, thermal equilibrium times product of NP divided by NI square. So we can represent it also in terms of uh, equilibrium uh, recombination uh, by molecular radiative recombination rate. <coughs> but since uh, product of NP um, will be larger than I, NI square, then <coughs> R will be right larger than R naught. Uh, until all photogenerated charge carriers do not recombine, and we will uh, eventually come back to initial this thermally equilibrium state. So now, if we want to see how uh, how charge carriers in the uh, photo excited semiconductor um, decay over time because of radiative recombination, um, we consider some net recombination rate, which is the difference between these two, uh, and it can be uh, described by recombination coefficient, Kr, times Np minus N0, P0. So um, also we can represent it in terms of um, recombination, uh, by radiative recombination rate at thermal equilibrium. So our goal for now will be to focus on quantitative description of this um, recombination coefficient and uh, net recombination uh, rate for bi uh, radiative by molecular recombination. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean this minus here? Uh, so that just to show that we have reduction of charge carrier concentration. So this derivative will be negative because we know that this is recombination. It's all about uh, reducing concentration of charge carriers. That's why we put this minus to highlight this. So now let us 
come closer to this um, story. So first, according to uncertainty principle, uh, in one direction, like one dimension, um, the product, the, the third uncertainty of definition of position and momentum um, is defined by this uh, uh, equation. And uh, if we have three-dimensional case, that's what we want to deal with, um, we need to uh, consider that the maximum uh, vol volume available in the momentum space for um, being occupied by some particle, let's say in our case photon, um, is kind of defined by this h in uh, third power, which is uh, Max Planck constant. So that is some unit uh, volume of momentum space which can be occupied by a single um, photon. Uh, now let us consider um, two uh, spheres in momentum space. So this is just cross-section what we see on uh, this image. Um, with radius of uh, p, so momentum p, and momentum uh, p plus delta p. Um, each of these spheres, is like equi, equi energetic sphere, uh, corresponds to energy e and e plus delta e. So it means this sphere with larger radius. So the difference between them, like in their volume, this dvp is actually equal to 4 pi times p squared times dp. Uh, 4 pi here stands for, uh, actually, we can, since we can see the whole sphere, uh, we uh, deal with the full um, solid angle of 4 pi. So um, that we should highlight at the beginning so it makes uh, uh, it clear. Now when we have some volume defined between these two energy states E and E plus delta E, we need to determine how many available states to be occupied will be there. So in order to calculate this number of available states, delta uh, dn, uh, we divide this volume dvp by a minimum volume in the momentum space, um, which is defined by uh, this uh, Max Planck constant uh, in third power. Uh, here we have this factor of two um, that stands for different options for polarization of light, of light uh, of photons. And uh, uh, that uh, gives us finally the expression for the total available um, states which can be occupied by uh, photons. Now when we have states according like similar to what we were talking about uh, electrons and holes concentration if we know density of states uh, we need multiply it by some function which defines the probability of occupying these states. Uh, in this case in order to determine how many photons actually will be residing on these available states, uh, we need to multiply available states by this function of um, energy distribution for uh, photon population. And uh, this function is determined uh, by this equation. So we have here photon energy, like exponent of photon energy divided by um, kT um, minus 1. So this is uh, Bose-Einstein um, distribution. Um, now when we take this into account and keep in mind that this number of available photons um, this is equivalent of um, number of photons which is actually irradiated in this full um, solid angle of 4 pi. This is equation from previous slide to make it uh, clear uh, for our next steps. Uh, we know that there is a relationship between momentum and energy and uh, momentum can be expressed as energy divided by 
uh, speed of photo. Speed of photo is uh, actually uh, speed of light divided by refractive index of the medium where this photon is traveling. So that's why we can represent it as C divided by N. Uh, energy is photon energy um, equal to H nu. So we have N, so with such bar on top, um, stands just highlights that this is not concentration but refractive index, and to be more specific, real component of refractive index because it has also imaginary component. Uh, and uh, it shows how much slower um, light is traveling in certain medium uh, in comparison to vacuum. Then we have H nu photon energy, and in denominator we have our um, speed of light. So now, um, when we know already expression for momentum, um, differential momentum will be given by this equation. So we can substitute now this here and this here. Uh, we get expression for number of photons emitted in the whole um, solid angle of 4 pi, uh, also taking into account some polarization possibilities. Uh, in terms of uh, frequency, so as a function of frequency, um, we have nu square dv. So that is um, the small amount of photons which is uh, emitted in the narrow range of uh, frequencies of v plus uh, nu plus nu uh, uh, from nu to nu plus delta nu. Next step, we want to introduce one function which defines the uh, probability uh, of absorbing uh, light because we have this de de detailed balance if light is emitted it also can be absorbed and in the contrary if it's absorbed it can be emitted so there is some function which describes absorption probability now we are talking about thermal equilibrium and the thermal equilibrium generation rate means absorption of light of photons and generation of electron hole pairs will be equal to um, radiative recombination rate, uh, means this free charge carriers meet somewhere in the semiconductor, recombine and emit uh, light. So these guys are uh, equal, and we can express the um, generation rate as uh, integral for all. Uh, frequencies and all available photons, like we have this product of um, absorption probability and photons, uh, in all frequencies means in all energies and um, uh, all photons which are emitted in the uh, 4 pi solid state. So when we substitute expression for um, these photons dn uh, photons in the integral, uh, which is this expression, so it goes here, we get uh, this expression. Uh, so we uh, take out some constants uh, out from the um, integral. Uh, keep in mind that this uh, n, so I forgot to mention and highlight here, uh, n is a function of frequency. So you know that refractive index is, depends on uh, frequency. That's why we have this dispersion uh, of light. Uh, white light is splitting in uh, colorful spectrum. And uh, that is because refractive index is a function of wavelength. So this should be also highlighted here. I just didn't put initially because uh, it's like overcrowding the, the whole uh, equations. Uh, but this is frequency dependent parameter, so it stays under integral because we integrate from zero frequency to um, infinity. So we kind of scan whole possible spectrum. <clears throat> now we introduce one more 
parameter, which is photon lifetime. Um, obviously, if we have high absorption probability, it should result in low photon life. That's why um, photon uh, lifetime is reversely proportional to this function, which we introduce um, absorption probability. <clears throat> From other point of view, uh, how we can also determine this photon lifetime? Um, we consider lens, like effective penetration lens of um, photon inside the material, which stands here in numerator, and divided by speed of photon in this material. So that will give us some effective light, uh, lifetime of photon um, during the uh, time it can fly in the material and then be absorbed, so it kind of vanished. Uh, we remember from previous discussion that when we introduced, you're welcome, when we introduced the uh, absorption coefficient, that its physical meaning, its definition of absorption coefficient is um, quantity, which is 1 over absorption coefficient, is defined as the effective penetration uh, lens of light inside the material. Yes? Uh, speed of so speed of photon we determine as speed of light divided by uh, refractive index n. So that is your question, or I mean, it's new. Yes. This ah new. Okay, that is never mind. So that is v. But uh, so we we put here photon next to it, so it's it's we it's uh, speed of photon, yeah. Um, somehow it changed the font, and uh, instead of we, uh, it puts new. So this new photon is is we. Um, uh, that is speed of photon, and if we have just new, that is frequency. So I guess it was just some issue with language uh, set for the for that moment when I put V. Uh, so the speed of photon is uh, speed of light C divided by <coughs> N, real component of refractive index. From here, we can actually um, express this function uh, absorption probability. Uh, and that absorption probability will be, um, let's write here, g uh, nu is equal, why it doesn't write, g nu is equal to um, c times alpha nu divided by n. So now we can, uh, why it's important? Why it's important to uh, determine this uh, expression for this absorption probability. Because uh, here, in the right side, we have all parameters which we know. So first of all, C is universal constant, speed of light in vacuum. Um, alpha, as a function of nu, we can measure uh, of any material, and n as a function of nu, it also function of nu, uh, we can also measure. So uh, we want to go from something abstract, some not defined absorption probability, to some, like, uh, expressing in some terms which can be experimentally measured and further be used uh, in our calculations. So that's why we can express it in something what is uh, easy to measure and substitute it in this equation. So when we substitute this into uh, previous equation, instead of uh, j nu, we uh, get it in terms of um, n, alpha, and c, uh, we get the expression for equilibrium 
uh, by molecular recombination, uh, by molecular radiative recombination rate. So, what is important here to underline? We see that it will be equal, as we know from the beginning, um, under equilibrium condition to this Kr times Ni square. In its turn, Ni square is defined by effective density of states. Here I just assume that um, effective density of states of holes uh, like at the uh, top of valence band and at the bottom of the conduction band are equal, so I just considered Nc square. But that is not so important. What is important is um, this exponent, the argument of the exponent, exponential function. So we have a minus Eg divided by Kt. So that tells us that radiative um, bimolecular recombination will have larger recombination rate for narrow band gap semiconductors. So the narrower band gap semiconductor is the higher probability and uh, actually contribution, relative contribution of um, radiative by molecular recombination towards the whole uh, like net recombination losses in semiconductor. And that's something what you should kind of keep in mind because um, it is important, it um, really affects on uh, recombination dynamics in different uh, semiconductors depending on the width of the forbidden energy gap, like of the band gap. Uh, now we can actually uh, express also recombination coefficient as net, like recombination rate equal under thermal equilibrium for bimolecular recombination, radiative recombination, uh, divided by Ni square. So, uh, if we take into account expression for Ni square and substitute it here, we get this uh, final uh, equation which describes um, recombination, uh, uh, radiative by molecular recombination coefficient um, of uh, semiconductor as a function of its band gap absorption coefficient. Uh, obviously, absorption coefficient should be there because radiative recombination is a reversal process of absorption of light and generation of photo-excited uh, charge carriers, electrons and holes, means we can get radiative recombination only in that case if there are excessive non-equilibrium charge carriers, and in order to get them, we need to absorb light and create them. So uh, there is a detailed balance between absorption and radiation. That's why obviously one of the key parameters which define recombina radiative recombination coefficient is this absorption uh, coefficient. Also, we have refractive index, which is also a function of uh, frequency. Radiative by molecular recombination coefficient. We can make a next step. Uh, and uh, go to so-called new type mechan of, of recombination mechanism. Uh, and this is either called as trap um, assisted recombination or shockley read hole recombination. Uh, which is recombination via deep energy level. shockley read hole recombination is called in the name of three scientists who developed statistics for um, this trap-assisted recombination. And uh, recombination via deep localized energy level located in the band gap. So um, what is important here to underline before we go into uh, equations? If we have pure, like ideal semiconductor, we have EV, EC, oh, sorry, it's, it's EC. Uh, we have no energy levels in the band gap. In this energy gap EG, there are no energy levels. 
then the only possible recombination mechanism is band-to-band -band recombination. So when we have uh, electron which meets with hole and recombine. So that's bimolecular recombination band-to-band. -band. Um, most of these recombination activities can happen via radiative recombination which we just quantitatively describe uh, right now. However, in real life we don't have ideal cases and it is possible that within the band gap there are some energy levels E let's say trap 1 E trap 2 and so on so they correspond to some defects um, let's say some impurity atoms which can be unintentionally added into uh, semiconductor material because we cannot take everything out from there or intentionally added when we want to specifically add some atom which will create certain energy level inside the band gap so when we have um, such energy levels in the band gap this ideal world of bimolecular recombination is quite disturbed and depends how many of these uh, defects per unit volume we have in semiconduct. So we create conditions when charge carriers can go not only from band to band, but they can actually go to this energy level and be trapped there. And then hole can also be trapped. And if they meet at this energy level, both kind of trap, obviously they will recombine. So it opens a new possibility for a combination process in semiconductors. Right. Yes. Isn't it the same as the energy levels for acceptors or donors? They are also in for acceptors and donors, you are right, that is similar. They also create energy levels. However, and we will discuss this in details, but we can address this question. It's an important question. It's some, when we want to dope semiconductor, we want to create, add some impurity, which will create very shallow energy level. Let's say we want end dope semiconductor. So we provide some donor type uh, acceptors, which create very shallow energy level in the um, band gap. Why very shallow? Because we want to have very high probability of electrons to be thermally activated at room temperature and uh, go into the conduction band where energy states are delocalized and electron can easily move. Don't forget that these energy levels, if we're talking about reasonable concentration of impurities, of uh, doping atoms, they are localized still, they are not delocalized. So it means that electron being here at this energy level cannot contribute to charge transport. It has to be thermally activated. The fact that it's very close to the bottom of the conduction band, EC, and very far from uh, top of the valence band means that the probability of capturing a hole, sorry about this, will be very low. It will be comparable to the transition of a uh, hole actually to to valence band or this bimolecular act of bimolecular recombination that's why such very shallow energy levels which are usually used in doping do not contribute to the trap assisted recombination for that purpose we need some deep energy levels and that these guys are not doping centers they are really making our life much more difficult and we do not want to have them. Uh, however, we need to know how um, recombination happens there. And uh, in many cases, it is impossible to get rid completely from them. So that is the difference. Uh, and we will definitely highlight this difference in the future because there are some quantitative um, description which defines which energy level is considered as doping or trap level, which can only trap charge carry and keep it 
and which charge uh, energy levels are efficient recombination centers. So now uh, let us go into this interaction between mobile electrons and uh, in this case positively charged uh, defect which is fixed in crystalline lattice. So we have some donor time type defect means that donor type means that this defect wants to give one electron in the uh, pool of free electrons and it remains as a positive uh, ion in the crystalline lattice of semiconductor. So this guy um, is mobile electron, can move in any directions. Uh, this just localized stays in the crystalline lattice. Now let us consider what condition should be fulfilled that this ion, positively charged ion, can trap electron on it. So what kind of forces there and, and contributions we should pay attention on. First of all, obviously, is Coulombic interaction between this positively charged ion and negatively charged electron. So this will, this electric force will attract electron to the positively charged ion. And uh, uh, from other side is kinetic energy of, of this electron. So if it's very high, it will be against the um, electron, uh, electric force. So in order to make sure that um, electron will be trapped, it should appear in some point of space defined by this sphere of radius r. So it's just cross section here. This sphere will be the radius of this sphere will be defined from the equilibrium between potential energy of electrostatic interaction between positively charged defect and elect negatively charged electron and uh, thermal energy of, of uh, electron. So if uh, this potential energy of uh, interaction between uh, via Coulombic interaction will be higher than kinetic energy means that electron will be somewhere in this volume, it will be eventually trapped. So that's why we can uh, introduce important parameter, which is capture cross-section, sigma n for electrons. And that capture cross-section is actually the area. It's If we have cross-section of this sphere, as shown on the image, um, the area of this cross-section is the uh, capture cross-section for electrons by this defect. And this is the expression based on this equilibrium condition. Um, assuming that we have some room temperature, like 300 uh, Kelvin, if we substitute magnitudes for all other constants here, we will see it's 10 to minus uh, 14, um, like centimeter uh, square, divided by epsilon square. So we have the electric constant in the denominator. Uh, means that uh, the electric constant actually shows us uh, the ratio of magnitude of electric field in different mediums. The higher the electric constant, the lower will be electric field in comparison to this electric field in vacuum. Uh, so that is important because different semiconductors possess different uh, the electric constants. For instance, um, there are two types of quite hot uh, semiconductors in the field of photovoltaics, uh, which are organic semiconductors and perovskites, hybrid organic and organic semiconductors. Uh, what is interesting between uh, them, the, like in terms of difference between them, is the electric constant. For organic semiconductors, the electric constant is something between uh, 2 4 like in the range. Uh, for uh, hybrid organic and organic perovskites, the the electric constant is something about 40. So that makes a big difference in terms of defining the uh, capture cross uh, section for um, electrons in such, such materials. So that should be um, uh, highlighted because this is important parameter which eventually also has 
um, a big impact on uh, recombination dynamics. So obviously from here we can say, okay, if we have everything the same, we want semiconductor material with larger dielectric constant because it will shrink this cross-section area, will make more difficult to catch this electron and means there will be more chance to extract this electron in electric circuit, external electric circuit, and do some useful work. So that um, what we already can uh, think about um, some materials features of semiconductors which will play a role in this trap-assisted recombination. In in regard, if again, if we consider all other like the same, so um, sure, uh, in terms of the electric constant, since it's quite strong dependence, it's not just linear; uh, it's epsilon in second power. Um, a perovskite in this regard will win. However, it's not the highest possible dielectric constant. There's like titanium dioxide in some rutile allotropic mod modification with um, dielectric uh, constant of something 120. Uh, that's quite a lot, but titanium dioxide has a band gap of 3.2 electron volts and at room temperature considered to be just a dielectric. So definitely not the best feature for making active layer photovoltaic materials. What is the band gap of these two? Oh, these two, oh, it can vary, it, it changes, but it's, uh, it can change in the range which is definitely interesting for uh, optoelectronic devices. It's some, starting from um, something two electron volts for wide band gap systems and going to uh, less than one uh, electron volt. But usually most of them in this range between two and one electron volt. Silicon is 112, 1.12 electron volt, which is some also somewhere in this range. Uh, germanium, for instance, is 0.63, so it's narrow band gap, so already can say that uh, radiative recombination matters more for germanium than for uh, silicon, but we are talking about extremely pure materials, because if they are not extremely pure, then we have energy levels within the band gap, and that messes up all story. So let us continue with trap-assisted recombination. So now, obviously we don't have just one uh, the, uh, this uh, donor type impurity, so we have many of them, they are fixed in crystalline lattice, and we have mobile electrons. So in order to uh, make it easy for calculations, we can uh, use such concept as mobile target, so we kind of draw a sphere around a ele mobile electron, and this sphere, the radius we already determined, it's with the cross-section, capture cross-section area, and uh, uh, consider next steps. First of all, we want to know how many electrons are in the semiconductor, and that is n naught. that is the concentration of equilibrium electrons in semiconductor. Then we need to know how fast they move. And that is Vn, thermal speed of, sem of electron in semiconductor. Keep in mind that this uh, target is mobile, so it's kind of fixed, this sphere is fixed to mobile electron and moves together with um, electron all over the semiconductor. Then we need to know concentration of uh, donor type centers in semiconductor. And that is ND. So that is total concentration of donor type centers. But not of all of them are positively charged because some have electrons trapped on them. So they compensate this electric charge. They are neutral. So we need to deal not with total concentration of these donor type centers, uh, but with the difference between total concentration and number of trapped electrons, ND. ND, this stands for electrons which are trapped by these donor type centers. So the difference will actually give us the density of uh, empty, um, positively charged donor type centers per unit volume. Then 
in one second, this mobile target, because this electron always moves, will uh, cover volume, which is equal to the area of this cross-section, times speed with which this sphere is moving inside semiconductor. So that will give us this Vn times sigma n. Now, we need to know how many empty positively charged donors, like these defects, are in this volume. So we just multiply this volume to the difference of concentration total and ND, um, uh, total concentration of uh, donors and uh, uh, concentration of electrons which reside on these donors, which are trapped by them. So the difference with this expression in the parentheses gives us um, concentration of uh, empty positively charged donors which can still potentially trap these mobile electrons. So now, in order to get the trapping rate, the amount of traps events of electrons by these positively charged uh, donors. Uh, we need to multiply, so per unit volume, per unit time, we need to multiply total concentration of electrons uh, to this expression, which uh, gives us uh, how many uh, empty uh, positively charged donor atoms will be covered by this uh, volume uh, of mobile target uh, inside the semiconductor because we this is for just single semicon uh, single electron and we have many electrons all of them are moving around and all of them can be equally trapped as uh, any uh, and that's why we need to multiply uh, this expression by uh, total concentration of charge carriers so this expression gives us uh, trapping number of trapping events per unit volume per second, per unit time. So that is about trapping. Now we have always some equilibrium condition, um, steady state equilibrium condition. We cannot only trap charge carriers. There should be some opposite process which counterbalances these activities. And uh, that counterbalancing uh, process will be detrapping event. So imagine electron is trapped by defect, it stays there, but over time it interacts with these vibrations of crystalline lattice, gains some energy, and can actually go away from this trap. So we may have trapping event and we may have also detrapping event. So under steady state condition, we should have equilibrium. So in this expression is that one which we discussed on the previous slide. It stands for um, rate of trapping events. And here will be um, rate of detrapping events. So obviously detrapping events, they should be proportional. There is some coefficient alpha n. Uh, it defines the probability of detrapping and also... Um, the trapping rate will be proportional to the number of trapped electrons. ND. We already also introduced this. So number of electrons which already trapped by these uh, defects and reside on them. So now we can express this concentration of trapped electrons in two different forms. First, we can express it actually from this um, steady state condition when we have dynamic uh, equilibrium. So we can um, get uh, express ND from this equation, so this will look like this. And we will have ND divided by 1 plus alpha N divided by N naught Vn times sigma N. N naught stands for uh, equilibrium concentration of electrons in semiconductor. From other side, we can also use this function, f as a function of e, which defines uh, with which probability um, some defect energy level will be populated by electrons. So if we know 
uh, because that's what we did before for calculating concentration of equilibrium charge carriers. We multiply density of available state by this function. So now if we have total concentration of uh, donor type defects, uh, that's total concentration of states where electrons can be trapped, we multiply it by Fermi-Dirac uh, distribution, where uh, instead of mm, uh, EC or EV uh, bottom or top of valence conduction or valence band, we have uh, energy position of this uh, donor type level in the band gap uh, minus Fermi energy level. So we can express ND, concentration of trapped electrons, by these two equations. You see numerators are the same, and uh, the denominators, uh, actually this exponent is, should be equal to this term. From equating them, we can calculate uh, the probability of thermal activation of trapped electron from uh, this defect level. And it will be equal to uh, N0, equilibrium charge carrier concentration, times uh, uh, speed of electron, thermal speed of electron, times uh, cross-section, capture cross-section, and this exponential term. So it will depend uh, very much, because there is exponential dependence on the energetic position where this energy level of defect uh, donor type defect is located. So um, that should be highlighted. Taking into account that um, equilibrium charge carrier of electrons and not can be expressed uh, as we know from previous discussions. Uh, we can substitute it here and eventually we will uh, get the expression for uh, absorption coefficient uh, in terms of, uh, so we will skip this Fermi level position, because Fermi level position you don't know always where it is, but uh, you know uh, EC, uh, bottom of the conduction band, since we are talking about electrons here. Um, so you know, because material always, it's property of material where bottom of the conduction band is located. Uh, and then you, you just need to know only uh, position, energy position of this defect energy level in the uh, semiconductor. So this is um, equation in those terms which are convenient for us uh, for probability of thermal activation of trapped electrons from defect levels. So means, in other words, probability of detrapping effect. So now we kind of know all all parameters, we know expression for this uh, detrapping probability, which is uh, a strong function of its energy position, of defect energy position, energy level position within the band gap, uh, in this particular case with respect to the bottom of the conduction band. And um, with this information we can proceed uh, further and uh, try to uh, derive statistics for trap assisted recombination. So now let us assume that we have some deep energy level in the band gap. So here, this. We call it ER, like energy uh, level for recombination center. It's somewhere deep, close to the middle of the band gap, and um, far away from both conduction. Uh, conduction and valence bands. Now, this is total concentration of um, these uh, recombination centers per unit volume, which is equal to the sum of electrons which are trapped on this energy level and holes which are trapped on this energy level. So it's either, uh, you can consider this in the following way. It could be considered as um, 
energy level, energy uh, states of this deep uh, level are occupied by electron, then it stands for NR. And PR is actually those which are empty, because if we consider some absence of electron, we can interpret it as whole, which positive charge. Uh, if we don't have electron on the uh, defect level, which is located energetically close to the middle of the band gap, uh, in this case, uh, we can claim that it trapped a, um, a hole. So it's in uh, another way of approaching this. But now we need to deal with both electron and holes because we are talking about we will talk about recombination, and recombination happens when electron and hole uh, meet with each other. So now look here at these uh, possible transitions which can happen in such situation. First of all, this is uh, recombination uh, rate uh, for electrons. What it will be proportional to? Obviously, if we need this event of meeting electron and hole, we need, it will be proportional to concentration, total concentration of electrons, N, and PR means how many uh, holes are already residing on this energy level. So these two factors, these two concentrations, will determine how uh, fast we will um, recombine uh, electrons uh, via this deep energy level. Uh, so for that, we, if we increase the amount of available free electrons, obviously there will be more chances that electrons will be trapped. And in order to have this recombination process, we need uh, already previously trapped holes on, the, uh, on this energy level. So in this case, we uh, will have recombination. The same stands for recombination of rate for holes. So it will be proportional to total concentration of holes in the valence band and previously trapped electrons on this deep energy level. So they will meet and recombine. Now let's consider this reverse process of thermal activation uh, and detrapping. Detrapping rate will be proportional only to density, like concentration of trapped uh, electrons, because in order to detrap, we need something to be trapped already there. And the same stands for holes. They can be also thermally uh, activated, detrapped from this uh, energy level, and uh, it, their um, rate of detrapping will be proportional to the concentration of already trapped holes. So quite, I believe, uh, straightforward and clear picture. Now let us describe it quantitatively. So the recombination rate Rn will be proportional to capture, like then we have speed of electron capture cross section of electron by this energy level and by this uh, like defect which forms this energy level in the band gap. And here is this PR. Uh, we need previously trapped holes on this energy level. Uh, then thermal activation detrapping process will be probability of detrapping process, which we derived previously uh, on the previous slide, uh, times concentration of electrons, which are already uh, trapped on this energy level. Uh, this is expression which we derived previously on the uh, for uh, detrapping probability. And in order to make it more convenient for us, in order not to operate with this exponent, we can make some substitution. We can claim that this part, nc times exponent, uh, will be equal to n1, as you see here. So this N1 is uh, the physical meaning of this N1. If you take a look on this 
equation. Um, is concentration of equilibrium, highlight this, equilibrium concentration of electrons in the conduction band if uh, energy level of this defect, ER, is uh, coincide with the Fermi energy level. Because if we substitute instead of this ER, E Fermi, it will be just equation for equilibrium charge carriers in the conduction band. So when Fermi level coincide with the uh, defect level, uh, then uh, equilibrium charge carrier concentration in conduction band for electron will be equal to N1. So this is the physical meaning of this uh, term N1. And we introduce it in order to make our life easier in the derivation process because we don't want to keep this NC times exponent. <clears throat> so uh, now when we have expressions, quantitative description for recombination rate and detrapping rate, we can get the net recombination rate uh, of electrons via this deep energy level ER. And that will be just the difference between uh, recombination and detrapping. So we subtract from recombination rate, detrapping rate, and the difference will give us actually how uh, fast concentration of electrons reduces uh, over time. That will be equal to this uh, Vn sigma n, which defines the uh, volume which is uh, captured by this uh, spherical uh, trap, like mobile trap, for one electron. And uh, difference here, times uh, difference between n times pr minus nr times n1, because uh, we can look here for expressions of uh, Rn and Gn. The same we can write for holes. So it will look the same. We will also have difference between recombination rate of holes and detrapping rate of holes. And here the difference will be actually uh, this P1 uh, so this P1, in analogy to N1, will be concentration, like meaning of this, uh, it will be concentration of equilibrium holes in the valence band if the uh, Fermi level coincide with the position of this um, energy level uh, of the defect. In the case when we have uh, more photogenerated charge carriers per unit volume, then concentration of these defects uh, in semiconductor, and that happens quite often because if it's not the case, this semiconductor is not so good, honestly, and we don't want to deal with it. So for high quality semiconductors, uh, NR, uh, concentration of um, recombination centers should be uh, relatively low. Um, so means even at relatively low level of photo excitation, this ratio will be true. In that case, um, recombination rate, net recombination rate for electrons and net recombination rate of uh, holes will be uh, equal to each other and will be defined to some net recombination rate R, which we will mark as R. So now, let's go further. We have in our equations, so this I just copied them from previous uh, slide, uh, we need to deal with PR and NR uh, in both cases. We need to express them somehow because we don't know these uh, concentrations. So for that purpose we need also this function which gives us the probability of uh, filling the recombination center with energy ER and uh, the fact that means filling means that it will be 
occupied by electrons, so electron will be trapped there. If this function fr gives the probability of electron to be trapped, the uh, expression 1 minus this function will go, give us the um, probability that the recombination center will be empty, because uh, it's either filled or empty. So the probability that it's either filled or empty is unity, then if we subtract from unity probability that it's uh, filled, then it will be uh, empty. So we know that total concentration is nR, and uh, uh, how we can determine uh, concentration of trapped uh, electrons is nR times this function, which defines the probability of uh, deep energy uh, level uh, will be occupied with electron. In order to define that it will be occupied with a uh, hole, we need to multiply total concentration of these energy levels by uh, 1 minus fr, this uh, function. So when we introduce, like express nr and pr via this total concentration of defects and uh, this function fr, we can substitute it into our equations here. So plus, we consider that from previous slide, delta n is much larger than n r. So we can equate these two um, equations, like equation 1 and equation 2, because they should be equal. So that's what is shown here. So now we substitute, instead of PR and NR, their expressions, these guys, in this equality. Then we rearrange this equality in that way that we can take out parentheses, these products, uh, Vn sigma n and Vp sigma p. Now we can uh, express it to like rearrange so that in the right side we have zero and make a substitution. We introduce here a new parameter, which is capture uh, coefficient for uh, electrons and holes. So instead of product of thermal uh, speed and uh, capture cross section for electrons, we can uh, now operate with a single uh, parameter, which is uh, capture coefficient uh, of electron by this energy level with uh, deep energy level ER. And the same we can introduce for uh, the capture coefficient for holes. Uh, so now when we replace these products with capture coefficients and open parentheses, we can solve this uh, equation for uh, function FR, which we so far don't uh, uh, have in terms of uh, concentration of uh, mobile electrons, holes, so we have electron concentration, hole concentration, and position of this energy level uh, within the band gap, because N1, uh, P1 and N1, these guys are mm, determined by the position of um, energy level in the band gap. So now when we have this function, we can proceed further. So we will consider only net recombination rate for electrons since we know that it will be equal to net recombination rate of holes. They are the same. So we have PR and NR. Instead of them, we can uh, use uh, nr times uh, this 1 minus function fr and nr times fr, so we can take out of parentheses this uh, nr. And eventually when we uh, rearrange it, we will have cn times nr, capture coefficient of electrons by this energy level um, uh, er, times total concentration of defects which form this energy level ER, uh, times 
n total concentration of electrons minus fr, this function which we determined on the previous slide, uh, times n plus n1. So now if we substitute here instead of this fr, our uh, previously determined function fr in terms of n p1 n1 we will get the following equation then when we set it to common denominator as shown here and uh, simplify we will eventually come to this expression for uh, net recombination rate of uh, electrons via deep energy level ER in terms of capture coefficients for electrons and holes which describe the properties of this energy uh, of this defect uh, and thermal motion of electrons like because it has this cross section area times uh, thermal speed of electrons uh, also, it is determined in terms of total um, non-equilibrium charge carriers of uh, available in the semiconductor product N and P. Uh, intrinsic charge carrier concentration because uh, this product N1 times P1, these are equilibrium charge carrier concentrations when we assume that Fermi level is located at the energy level of this defect level ER. So its key question, a key, key moment here is equilibrium charge carrier concentration. For equilibrium charge carrier concentration, the product of uh, electron and hole concentration gives us an I square. So we can substitute this product with an I square. And uh, in the uh, denominator, we have also cross section, uh, sorry, capture coefficient for electrons and holes. Um, total concentration of electrons and this N1 and P1 means that here these guys N1 and P1 they um, are directly and strongly exponentially dependent on the position of energy level ER within the band gap. So we have uh, all parameters uh, which have influence on the net recombination rate via this deep energy level. So now we can make further few steps of uh, modification. So we can write instead of N and P expression that it will be sum of N I N naught equilibrium charge carrier concentration and excessive non-equilibrium charge carriers. The same stands for electrons. Um, N I can be expressed as n naught times p naught. Then we open this parenthesis and eventually get um, this equation. So we have sum in the um, numerator sum of equilibrium charge carriers for electrons holes plus non-equilibrium electrons. Uh, we also assume that we have delta n is equal to delta so that's another fact what we need to highlight here. Uh, and this sum is multiplied by delta n. Uh, so still we have this n1 and p1 in the denominator. Means that these guys also, um, the position of energy level um, makes a big difference for net recombination rate. So now let us... Sorry. Yes? Oh, okay, so it's, it's uh, over. Okay, good. Then we finally came to this point now when we have final expression for net recombination rate of uh, charge carriers. Oops, sorry. Charge carriers. Uh, net recombination rate of uh, charge carriers via deep energy level located somewhere close to uh, middle of the well, it's it's not specified here. It's just deep energy level uh, in the um, uh, in, within the band gap. And further, we will continue with uh, introducing 
and discussing different conditions of high and low level of excitation. How this recombination lifetime, which we will introduce at the beginning of next lecture, uh, will behave uh, at different level of excitations. And how this recombination lifetime means net recombination rate will be um, dependent on position of this uh, energy level within the band gap. So this is our uh, goal for next time. Uh, thank you very much for attention and uh, I hope to see you on Thursday. Yeah, if you have any questions, you are welcome. So this video will be available online so you can revisit it and if you have any questions further, you can ask them at the beginning of next lecture.